Hey, happy Sunday to you. I thought today we would maybe delve into something a little more uncomfortable, but important. And we are coming to the end of a very difficult year in so many ways, but perhaps a year of hope and of renewal and of better is coming. As we approach the winter solstice on the 21st, it's a great opportunity to consider this as a time of introspection, reflection, and looking forward to what may be coming up next. The seeds of this year of growth have been sown, and maybe then we can allow them to flourish coming into this next year. I am not alone in suffering from different states of loss and of grief. This year, grief comes in many forms and it's not a state of being, it's a process. And there's so many different reasons to grieve as well as types of grief. For my sake and for others that I know that are going through this, I wanted to spend a little time in this space so I think many are familiar with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of grief. And I think over time, what we have come to understand is that it's helpful to have that kind of as a flexible construct of reflection and where we may be at that stage. But it's not a linear progression from one thing to the next. It often will go back and forth. Grief ebbs and it flows depending on you depending on what other events you have experienced, traumatic, what other losses have you sustained in your life? Where are you mentally and physically? So those stages, just to remind you again, the first is typically thought of as the shock, the numbness, the denial that goes with a loss. The next often is pain. And in that stage, it's not unusual for um, people to comment that they feel like there's a guilt, I didn't say, I didn't do, uh, whatever it may be that comes up. Um, if there was a complicated relationship, if there was trauma between you, um, it, it can come up right there. Then comes anger. <laughs> the anger, no, I don't want this, I don't deserve this, all the things uh, that anger, I'm mad that this is happening. And then it gets dark and it, you can slip into different stages of depression. And then perhaps at some point, the processing and the reflection has allowed you to find ways of coping and coexisting with your grief. It's not that it goes away. It's just that you are in a space of moving to the place where you are able to walk alongside it and stay connected to whatever it was that you loved, that you have lost whether it was as somebody special in your life, um, a person, a companion animal, whatever it is, stay connected to what made that pain feel so poignant. It was your love for that special being. So you're not discounting a bit of it by choosing to move forward into reconstruction and working through the pain and the grief and the sadness to a place where you accept it. And on that same page around acceptance is the hope that things will move on, that you will feel better, that life will be all right. So those are just some phases to consider. And when we talk about grief, there's, there's actually quite a few different types of grief. Like I mentioned, it, if we talk about normal grief, we might be talking about um, just the ability to feel all the feels anger, irritability, impatience, sadness, depression, all of it, it's okay. Normal grief means that you are with it and over time, whatever time that may be, you move to a healthier state of being. But grief sometimes needs to be delayed. Sometimes it needs to be masked or even inhibited as other things are taken care of. You know, you're taking care of funeral arrangements. You are dealing with um, having to deal with property or whatever it may be, a move, um, different job. So there might be things that you're having to cope with. And those are called secondary losses. There may be other things that are attached to that first loss that you're having to navigate. 
There's also complicated grief and there's chronic grief, cumulative grief. Think of all the different types of losses that we might sustain. It's not just death. Death is a traumatic loss. There's lots of other layers of loss. There can be the loss, for example, somebody with dementia. They're still there, but they're not. That's a really tough one. That's called ambiguous loss, where you've lost the connection, but they're still there. So there's really lots of different types of grieving. There's lots of different emotions that arise physically. Oh boy, so many different things may come up, whether it's changes in sleep, if you physically feel ill, your guts are not happy, you don't wanna eat, um, or you maybe turn towards maybe unhealthy coping mechanisms. This is a real concern around substance abuse and alcohol, um, uh, lots of behaviors that you're just trying to distract and repress. So that's really what I wanna to go to next. Grieving takes courage and it takes compassion and patience to allow it to be whatever it is for you. You have no need to perform. You shouldn't feel any pressure to pretend that you haven't been affected. And there's no need to lie to anybody about your experience. It is what it is for you. And if you are an ally and a supportive space for somebody who is grieving, please allow them to be with their grief. Don't explain it away and tell them it's going to be okay or try to fix it. Don't try to explain away their grief. They have a right to feel what they are feeling. Let them be with it without judgment. Meet them in the eye, eye to eye, sit with them, be with them and allow them to move through. If you are concerned for their well-being, maybe it is necessary for counseling. Sometimes it's really important to turn towards professionals. Please don't discount that. So be that friend as well. If you feel if you're concerned about somebody's physical, mental well-being, and you think that maybe they need additional help, connect them, be with them as they connect. All of that is okay. So it's really a sign of emotional and spiritual maturity and strength to sit in those feelings of discomfort and allow yourself to take the time to process, admit when you're not feeling okay. You may find that there's peace that comes with rituals, spoken word, acts that speak to you. I love there's a Celtic tradition that I was recently made aware of where um, you honor the life, the spirit that has chosen you and you were there and present when that life passed, Amakara. And maybe you create a space, whether it's in your own space or whether it's in your physical world, a space to be with and reflect what is lost. There may be in those acts of remembrance, solace, healing, balm for the wounds. I think that it's important to be authentic and compassionate and be without judgment for yourself and for others. Friends, as we move forward, be with whatever is for yourself. And if individuals really have sustained significant loss, allow them to feel whatever it is that they're feeling and help them navigate their way towards a space where they can coexist, accept the loss, and maybe move towards hope. With that, I would leave you maybe just with a, a couple of resources. Please don't forget the suicide hotline is there. There are also hotlines around um, depression. And there's a wonderful book I, I came into awareness of um, that is by, I'm going to say her name correctly, it's Kate Inglis, I-N-G-L-I-S, Notes for the Ever Lost, A Field Guide to Grief. Some really beautiful words from her. Lean into your family, lean into your friends, lean into your pets, lean into nature, lean into art, lean into music, whatever soothes your bruised soul. From my bruised soul, to those of you out there who may be feeling 
loss as well, or are supporting those that may be feeling that. I wish you peace. I wish you hope. And we'll see each other soon. Bye now.